Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at an example that deals with accounting for Chapter 11 reorganization. This topic is covered in advanced accounting as well as on the CPA exam for and to a degree regulation. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. YouTube is where you would like where I want you to subscribe. I have over 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lectures. Please like them if you like them, share them, put them in the playlist, let the world know about them. If you're benefiting from my YouTube, it means someone else might benefit as well. Share the wealth. This is my Instagram account, this is my Facebook account, and this is my website. On my website, I always have, or I'll try to always have, some sort of a CPA offer. Right now, Becker is running a $1,000 off of their best gold standard CPA prep course in the world. This is unlimited access, so once you sign, you're good to go until you pass. I strongly suggest you go for it. You may not be studying for the CPA now. You might be starting in the fall. Buy it now. It has unlimited access because in the fall, that offer might go away. Also, if you're taking college courses, it will help you tremendously as a supplemental tool. Please go to my website, and I have the offer listed there. Let's talk about this company, Box Company. So we have this company, and what they did is they filed for Chapter 11 reorganization. And this is what their balance sheet looks like now. So this is their original balance sheet. We're going to go through a series of transactions through the re reorganization process. Then we'll compare this balance sheet to the balance sheet after the reorganization. So let's take a look real quick at what they have so we have a good idea of what's going on. They have cash of 86000 they have a receivable minus the allowance of one for 107 inventory. They have property, plant, and equipment, total of 405 net, land held for an investment. Then they have a bunch of liabilities. And this is where the problem lies when you have too much debt. Accounts payable secured by inventory, accounts payable that's unsecured, notes payable that's unsecured, accrued expenses with priority, then other accrued accrued interest expense and they have a bond of 450,000 total debt of 918 and this is what we're going to be doing most of the work because to get out of bankruptcy to get out of chapter 11 you want to get out mean lean and no fat no fat means that you want to get rid of that debt so this is what we're going to be doing they do have common stock of half a million and the retained earning is obviously negative deficit of 600,000 and that's why they were getting into trouble because because uh, they're not generating enough profit for the business. Why? Because maybe the debt is eating up all the profit. So overall, total equity is negative 98,000. So we're going to be looking at series of transactions that's going to get them out of this situation. So let's take a look at the first transaction and see what's happening. So what happened is this. Now we're going to be negotiating with those creditors because we want to get rid of those of, of those of these debts. So the first thing we're going to do is creditors represented the unsecured accounts payable so we are talking about we're talking about this group here the unsecured accounts payable 134,000. this group agreed to accept our account receivable in full settlement of their claim they said guess what give me your account receivable give up your receivable i'll collect your money and I don't have to bill you anymore. And I will call, I will tell you that you are, we are even when it comes to accounts payable. Well, the fair value of the receivable not guaranteed by the company is 100,000. What does that mean? It means we have a receivable on the books for 107, but it's really worth 100,000. Now, remember what we learned about earlier. When you, when you give up an asset, the first thing you have to do is you have to write the asset to market value. Well, the asset is right now worth 107 it's supposed to be only worth a hundred thousand and since you are getting rid of the receivable there's no need for the allowance so you get rid of the allowance so what does that mean first you you adjust your receivable to the market value therefore you debit the allowance 13,000 to get rid of the allowance you debit the loss of 7,000 why the loss debit 7,000 because you need to reduce your receivable by 20,000 your receivable need to be reduced by 20,000 so you reduce your receivable, you remove the allowance, and you book the loss. Now you have a receivable. Now your receivable, your account receivable, is only 100,000. 100,000. Your receivable is 100,000. Okay? We debit the allowance because it's a contra asset. It, ha it has a credit balance. Therefore, we debit it to make the allowance go down to zero. So simply put in this transaction, I get rid of this, and I made this 100,000. Therefore, my receivable is 100,000 now. Okay, my receivable 
is 100,000. That's the first thing. Then once, my, once I adjusted my receivable, they said they will take the receivable so and they would remove my payable. Well, if they remove my payable, I'm gonna debit my payable, the unsecured payable, 134. I'm gonna debit my receivable, 100,000. So I gave them something that's worth 100,000 and they said they're gonna forgive me for 134. I like this. I'm gonna have a gain on the debt restructuring of 34. Therefore, I have a gain on this. So simply put, what happened here, if we go back to this picture here, simply put, after this transaction, account receivable is gone, and this debt here is gone. Okay, notice we are trimming down the balance sheet. Okay, and we booked a gain of 34,000. Okay. Let's see what happened next. Let's see what happened next. Now, again, I could not change the balance sheet constantly, but imagine then this is gone. And this is gone. Just kind of imagine. The next thing that happened is we're going to have to pay the accrued interest with priority. So we have accrued interest of 24000 and those are with priority. And they said we should pay them. Well, when we pay them, we're going to debit the expense, the accrued expense and credit cash. Simply put, this is gone. And we reduced our expense, our cash by twenty four thousand. So eighty six is reduced by twenty four thousand. Okay. Next, a creditor holding one hundred and twenty thousand dollar note agreed to accept the land held as an investment in full settlement of the note plus accrued interest of eight thousand. The land has value of ninety five. Let's look at the balance sheet. We have notes of two hundred thousand. We have loans of 200,000. One of the individuals that hold this note says, which is holds only 120, they said, well, if you give me this piece of land, land held as an investment, I have this land, I will, I would reduce your loan, I would remove your loan. Now the land held for investment, it's worth on the books of 80, but it's worth 95. The first thing we have to do is we have to write it up and book again. Then after we book the gain, we have to remove 120,000 of the liabilities and they also would re we would remove also there is some accrued interest and we would remove 8,000 of this accrued interest so we're going to reduce our accrued interest by 8,000 and reduce this by 120 but as a result we're going to get rid of we're going to give up this land so let's do this transaction so we're going to debit land credit gain this should be the credit credit gain okay then we're going to have to debit the note for at 120 debit the accrued interest payable of 8000 credit the land at fair value because now the land had a value for 95 this should be a credit moved forward and credit the gain this should be moved forward at 33000 okay so this is the entry this is the debit and this is the credit so simply put what happened here is now of the one of the 200000 we still have 80000 this is gone this is gone this is gone and we no longer have this land so all these accounts are gone and our interest payable now is interest accrued interest payable is only 42 because we reduced it by eight only 42 not nine is 42 it's only 42 okay all right now we book also again so notice as we're booking the gain those gains are going and eventually they are you know they are uh, they are changing retained earning they are bringing retained earning towards zero because now we're below zero because it's re increasing our retained earning okay so just i want you to look at this because at the end you're going to see the completed balance sheet now another creditor holding eighty thousand dollar note on which four four thousand dollar interest agreed to extend the maturity date of the note for two years and reduce the interest now, i told you we still owe eighty thousand dollar in notes the individual that holds this note plus they also for this note there's a four thousand dollar of accrued interest involved here they said what, what we will do we would uh, we would for, not forgive we will extend the uh, the term basically we would remove the old note and we'll issue a new note for the amount okay so basically we remove the old note we remove the accrued interest related to that note and we credit a new note called restructured debt so basically we replace the note and as a result, now it's going to give us more time to pay our bill. Now, for this transaction, we're not going to have no gain because the cash flow from this note, which is you don't have to worry about it, it's going to be 92800 and the loan is worth eighty four. Therefore, there is no gain. So you know why I did not book a gain? Because my future cash flow for that note that include interest 
will be 92,800, which is more than the book value of the note now, therefore there's no gain. So what we did in this picture, we basically, this, this whole note is gone, but now we have a new debt, a new debt of 84,000, a new debt of 84,000, and accrued interest now is reduced by an additional 4,000. Just kind of, you know, kind of keep up with this. So this way, when you see the last balance sheet, you are not surprised. Now we still have this bond here, 450, which is, it's a huge. Hey, guess what? The bondholder agreed to accept equity interest in the company of 150,000 share in exchange for the bond and accrued interest of 38. So the bondholder says, guess what? You give me 150,000 shares of your stocks, I will exchange it for the bond. I would, I would get rid of the bond. The market value of the stock is $1.25. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to debit the bond. Credit common stock, because I'm issuing common stock. How much do I credit common stock? The number of shares times the par value times one in whatever's left is the other contributed capital. And I credit again. Why did I credit again? I only gave up stocks that's worth 187,500. That's the fair market value of the stocks, which is 150,000 shares times $1.25. If my math is right, 187,500. 187,500, and I get rid of a note of 450,000. Okay? Therefore, I have a gain of 262. Okay? 262. So I have a gain, and guess what? This bond now is gone, but now common stock went up and retained earning went down because I booked some gain. Last bankruptcy administration expense totaling 16,000 are paid in cash. So I have to pay the lawyers, the accountant that paid on the bankrupts. They work on the bankruptcy. So bankruptcy expense is 16,000, debit and expense, which is would increase retained earning, reduce retained earning, sorry, reduce retained earning and credit cash, which, which would reduce cash. And this is what we look like after all things said and done. Our cash now is 46 because we had to make certain payment. We did not touch inventory. It seems we wanted to keep our inventory. Our property, plant, and equipment, I believe they stayed the same. We did not touch those. Let me see. Yeah, we did not touch those. I don't remember touching those. So we did not touch those. Okay. Notice account receivable is gone. I told you that was transaction one. So now this is our assets. Now we still have cash, inventory, and property, plant, and equipment. You remember the land held for investment is gone too. So this is what our assets looks like now. Accounts payable, we did not touch this accounts payable. You remember we got rid of other payables. We got rid of we got rid of this payable. We did not touch this. We got rid of this notes. We got rid of the priority, priority uh, accrued interest as well. Priority exp uh, priority accrued. We still have accrued interest of thirty eight thousand. That's the only thing that's left. Those are the only current liabilities that left. Now we have a new loan of 84,000, new re loan restructure. Also, we got rid of the bond. The common stock was 500,000. Now we issued an additional 150. Now we have other contributed capital because we issued new stocks and retained earning was 598. We increased it by 16, we reduced it by eight, then we increased it by 329,500. Those are the gains and the losses that we booked throughout the transaction. So we still have a deficit of 276,500. However, the total equity now is positive. Now we, now we came out kind of better than what we started with, right? So you could compare this balance sheet to this bloated balance sheet, bloated with debt, okay? So basically, we used to have 918 worth of debt. Now the only debt we have is, wow, not bad, 182. 182, so not bad at all. Um, I think there's something wrong restructured. I think this is, uh, yeah, 182, 182 worth of that, 182 worth of that, which is pretty good, okay? So remember that the, the net gain on the transfer of the asset will be reported as part of income, and the gain on the restructuring will also be reported part of income. So the gain and the losses will be reported part as income. Notice the, share, the stockholder's deficiency has been eliminated, but we still have deficiency in retained earning. Now we can, we can basically debit retained earning for this amount and, uh, yes, I'm sorry, credit retained earning. We can credit retained earning and debit capital stock 
and other contributed capital to make it go down to zero. We do have this option. So if desired by the parties, the interest, the organization plan could have included a provision to decrease the par value of the common stock and eliminate the deficit. You could also do that as well if you chose to. Okay. Hopefully this, this, uh, this, uh, this example showed you how we go through uh, um, a chapter seven reorganization. If you have any questions about this topic, email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. If you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it. And see you on the other side of success.